Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology, and I'm joined today by Dr. Nir Barzilai. Nir, how are you? I'm terrific. Nice being with you. So there's been a lot of excitement, Nir, around the longevity potential of the CERT6 protein. As a scientist and clinician, should we be excited about this? Yeah, yes. In fact, it's not only talking the talk, it's walking the walk. I'm I now became a board uh, member in this technology. I have to tell you that I was advising them for years for free, uh, underlying the fact that they're not doing the right things and I didn't want to be a consultant. And and I changed I, I changed uh, uh, forces now and I'm I'm fully with them because there are uh, lots of new evidence and a lot of new technology that really excites me and I really want it to succeed. I, I should tell you from the science perspective, I, I come from the science. You know, I have this centenarian study. We have 750 uh, centenarians and their families. And we found functional mutation in, in uh, the 36 gene that for me completed the story from mice to humans. And it's very important because if you have, let's put it this way, the F, two thirds of the drugs that FDA approved last year or 2021 actually, on 21, two thirds of the drug were based or supported by, the, by genetic discoveries in humans. We assume too much from mice from young mice in our previous de drug development and failed too often. So, so uh, this is another reason why I think that this is going to be very relevant to humans. So what are the potential health benefits to humanity from an approved CERT6 therapeutic? So, so look, there are always two issues that we have to consider when we're developing a gero, what we call a gerotherapeutic. Um, one is the benefit to prevent, you know, to target the biology of aging and prevent age-related diseases. It's, it's this idea that the TAME study represent, right? Let's get an FDA approval for prevention of variety of age-related disease. It's a phase three trial, but not so expensive. And, and let's get FDA approval so everybody uh, can take the, a drug and prevent age-related diseases. But until this is sinking in the mind of many, many people, we can talk later, but certainly the FDA, until they have an example, what every longevity biotech technology is doing is finding actually a disease that can be treated specific by such a drug. And, and then you can repurpose that or, or it's even could be more sophisticated because sometimes you don't want to do the longevity drug, right? Because the, 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 you want to do the, the disease drug in order to keep the years of patent on, on, on other and, you know, and make more money, which the investors want. So, so those are the consideration. Um, in this case, uh, and at this time, we will uh, target a, a condition and hopefully by targeting this condition, uh, we'll be able to repurpose this drug for other use. There's no formal decision yet, so I'll give you some of the, of the discussion points. There are more than one option. The, the obvious option where the companies spend a lot of time and on a lot of models is NASH. A, you know, a non-alcoholic hepatitis, steatotic hepatitis. Um, this this has been considered. You know, I have my own company, Cobar, and that was the target we chose years ago. But uh, it's not a popular target anymore. It's not a popular target for two major reasons, many reasons, but two major reasons. It's a graveyard <laughs> so far. Uh, there are lots of failure. And two, to actually do the studies, it's very expensive, in, including the phase one, phase two studies. Uh, we did a successful phase one, uh, two study, uh, uh, phase one B study in COBAR, um, but it didn't give us enough uh, resources to go on with this indication. 
And and I think this is the challenge for for this 36 uh, treatment. Um, on the other hand, there are other things that we're looking at, and I want to underline something that I think could be very important. Um, you know, when when uh, we had this uh, meeting in Toledo, Spain, where the clinician, the general scientists, clinical and scientists came together, and Tame was born out of this meeting. The other idea that was born from this meeting, and James Kirkland is leading that, is the possibility of, and it, he has a geroscience network or a gero, I forget the name, <laughs> some network that's funded by the NIA to take elderly, okay, and um, and treat them before they're going to have a health crisis. For example, before they're going through elective surgery. And we know that, that elderly are recovering slower uh, from surgery. There's more complication, more hospital days, more, you know, it takes them time to get to their baseline. So give them a gerotherapeutics, and, and there's a lot being done. There's rapamycin and senolytics and metformin, lots of uh, those drugs that are out there or, or nutraceuticals that are out there uh, to try and show in a clinical trial, in a multi-center clinical trial, that if you take the drug versus the placebo, your recovery is going to be better, your hospital stays are going to be better, and the question is going to be, what does it mean for the FDA? And this is an evolution. But certainly, if you have a drug that is safe by a phase one criteria, and you're showing on a phase two kind of study that you repurpose this drug for other use, this could only also re be repurposed by physicians for other use. And so... We are working on more evidence. We have evidence that those drugs are increasing, increasing the resiliency. Okay, um, and but we don't have still the studies to actually do surgery on those on older animals and show how it works. So this is in all in evolution. But it gives you, and that's not the only thing we're doing, but it gives you an idea of how we're thinking about it. There's another very important point to uh, consider. You know, we have the hallmarks of aging, right? Seven, nine, 12, whatever. It really do doesn't really matter. To be a hallmark of aging, in my mind, if you want to be strict, you, you want to show that things are getting wrong when you get old. And if you fix them by genetics, by drugs, your animal live healthier and longer. Okay, this is for me how you become a hallmark. Uh, and and I'm not I'm not sure every hallmark work for this strict uh, uh, description, but the most important thing with hallmarks is that you don't have to fix one all of them together. You can fix one and affect the other hallmarks. So what I'm saying is, you can pick a certain hallmark and develop a drug for what this hallmark is best best for. You know. When it comes to senolytic, a lot of the a, a lot of the uh, uh, the the development are for pul uh, primary pulmonary fibrosis, idiopathic pul pulmonary fib fibrosis. Okay, but if if you have a senolytic that does also other things, you actually have other indications as well. Okay, so I think we have to realize that if we have a true gerotherapeutics. We have lots of diseases that we con can consider, it, even if they don't look like they're the main reason we develop this drug. So, Nir, as you recently have joined the uh, the board of CERT Labs, the Israeli-US startup, what is it about the company's approach that excites you so much? So, le le let me first talk about the technology, because the company was developing small molecules to uh, activate a uh, 36 and that hasn't gone well and the really turn uh, turnover of this company or the exciting thing of this company and they have a great a great scientific uh, officer 
is actually using mRNA technology to deliver the mRNA for 36 um, uh, with a lipo particle uh, to the liver. And it's through developing these particles to the liver that uh, you get a lot of action that is not only on the liver, but it expands to lots of other uh, lots of other conditions. And uh, again, I'm 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 not willing at this point to to tell you about all of them. Some of them have to be re repeated. But uh, the, but think of it: you, de you deliver thirty six to the liver. There is expression of thirty six protein in the liver, and the liver talks with other organs. Okay. Um, including brain, muscle, other things. And so it has a systemic uh, effect um, by, by, by doing that. So I think the fact that you have this technology that now we know is working well um, and uh, having several indications in my mind makes this approach really very exciting uh, at this time. Great. So how will CERT Lab move into the clinical trial stage and obviously then onwards to commercialization? So, so it really depends on what we choose as our first target, right? So uh, think of this experiment. We are going to have uh, surgeons in several hospitals and we're going to tell them, hey, we would like to deliver this drug to your patient before surgery. Okay, so I don't want to say how many patients we need, um, and maybe we don't know how many patients we need, but there are lots of patients like that. And this is only basically a week study, a one-week study, okay? Uh, you know, maybe more, maybe it's two weeks, but it's a very short study. You, uh, you, you get the patients when they uh, register to a surgery, you offer them to be in... Uh, you know, in a study where they can, half of them can benefit, but it's not going to change the uh, outcome of the surgery itself. You're going to monitor, you know, um, recovery from surgery, which includes uh, when do they start eating, um, uh, complications, body weight, time of discharge, and maybe follow them two weeks later and asking them, uh, a, a subjective questionnaire about how they feel or some of something. It's difficult with elderly. Elderly will always complain, but but uh, you know, think of something that is actually short, and for a condition that happens quite often, and you could actually accelerate this uh, a lot. And I think the challenge here is more of a, how does the agency, how is how is the FDA going to look? at an indication like that. And actually, is it important for us to get the FDA, uh, uh, you know, accept that um, uh, because, um, you, you know, as long as it's safe, do, do we need a, a special permission for the FDA? It's a little bit more complicated, but it certainly give a commercial way because if you have this drug in, in study, you can figure a way to distribute the drug and use it for other purposes uh, as well. I'm, 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 not, I'm not suggesting that. I'm saying, you know, for me, uh, the commercial thing is actually quite independent from how I'm thinking like a clinician uh, on how do we want to approve drug? But there, there are opportunities beyond the FDA if you show that this drug is working the way we, we, want to, we want it to work. Let me just make sure. We haven't really, I'm giving this as an example of something that I am uh, really excited about and we haven't decided, okay? If it was Nash, if at the end we go to Nash because, you know, something happens or a company wants to, you know, to be with, you know, if there's a, a, a way for the company to grow better, then, uh, then it will be Nash. But with Nash, what you need to do is take, find patients and actually treat them 
you need to get biopsies before and after, which really reduce the volunteer the volunteering from this study. It's it's not only reduce the volunteering. There is another major obstacle with Nash, and that is, you know, we think that their imaging that works better on defining Nash than biopsies because the diseases are not spread equally in the liver tissue. The, there can be a part of the liver that is more sick than another part. So imagine you go with a biopsy to an actually preserved uh, part before, and then you go to something that was diseased after, and you have a whole new statistical a thing and you need more patience to show the same thing. So w- what I'm saying, sometimes you have a really good indication and you just have so much difficulties, so much money <laughs> that you're like, you know, let, let's see if there's another indication. That, that's kind of how we're thinking on that. So I, I, I didn't suggest that we decided uh, and we need some more studies to support at least the other indications, but uh, but but there'll be few, and we'll have to make the best decision for the science, for longevity, and for the investors.